Gentlemen, that was exactly how we planned that to be done. <laughs> Welcome. Well, Edwards actually have a theme song. Yes. Well, welcome to Open Crown Source, which we hope will turn into some kind of series. It should do. We've booked some guests for it, so we should at least make some kind of effort. Sorry, um, did you say Open Crown Source? A- absolutely. 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 Open crown. Open right. crown source. Open <laughs> crown source. I shall enunciate. I'm sorry I'm English. I don't speak the language very well. <laughs> do carry on, sir. Do, do carry, carry on. on. I, 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 do, I do want to hear about your open crown. That is phenomenally <laughs> interesting. What's yes, that? Tell us about your dental plan. That, that may very well come up. We don't know what cards we're going to get. So Is, is open crown a euphemism for a uncircumcised person? Let's put that to our guest, Francisco Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> what a ringing introduction, if ever I heard one. Yes. I can, I can give you a better one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Gareth, I don't edit. think you can, actually. I, I don't think it's possible to. But, oh, oh, much oh much trust much. me, I've spent far too much time on this. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome our guest at this time. There is no finer designer, the number one guy at Wadget Eye, the brighter adventure game writer with the gift of the talk from New York. Real deal, not fake, creator of Golden Wake. He's a success, plain and boredom after the critical reception of Ben Jordan, the Ayatollah of rock and roller. And two-time IBF and WBO welterweight champion of the world, the Spanish saint, San Francisco Gonzalez! Hey! And there he is in all his glory. Good lord, that was amazing. I couldn't have asked for anything better than that. It was like Don King and <laughs> Vince Neil all in one. It's only downhill from here. So, okay. <laughs> Hi. Welcome, Francisco. Hi, yes, thank you. Yeah. Sincerely. Thank you for having me. I have to say I'm very honored to be your first guest on this show. I thank you for having me. You, you well, are our first pick. Oh, well, thank you. That makes me feel lovely. You'll either go down in history or infamy as the first guest on this show. Yes. Uh, uh, either one is a good choice, in my opinion. Good, yeah. There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? <laughs> no, sure. Of course not. I mean, it can't get any worse than fucking Rex Nebula. I mean... <laughs> That's... That, was, that was poor. Let's okay. not go there. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Let's not go there. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I mean, I, I was gonna say it's only gonna go downhill from here, uh, or we can't get any lower. But then, of course, there's Ian Watkins. So that yes. could come up. That could that come could up. Come so up. Yeah. people may be watching this now, or they may be watching it later, and they're probably gonna wonder why we're here, just getting a bit drunk at you know the middle of the afternoon or the middle of the night, depending on which time zone you're in. So this is a game. And it's a show, but it's not a game show. That's our tagline. It's where four people sit down with each other and we brainstorm the next blockbuster adventure game. If you're listening this as the head of a major label or as a struggling indie, you're free to take this idea and run with it because, you know, after all, this is open crowdsource. See? See what we did? See? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Right, the rules are simple. The open crowdsource machine will randomly select four cards... And then we've got 30 minutes to sketch out a full-length adventure game from whatever it gives us. Some of the cards are plucked from classic adventure games and movies of yore. Some aren't. At the end of the half hour, a buzzer will sound, and we'll recap what we've designed. Uh, And we record these live, so the people in the chat room, uh, you go to irc.freenode.net, hash backseat designers, if you want to be on the chat. Or you can keep getting in contact with us on Twitter, which is at BS Designers. Uh, and you guys can suggest plot points, additions, and most importantly of all, we're going to need a title for this. So, you know, get on it, guys, because 
you know, we can't do it all ourselves. No, so, no seriously, yeah. <clears throat> Francisco, have you got any idea what you've signed yourself up for? <laughs> None at all. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's going to have to do. Um, Fred, yeah. is the machine ready? Yes, master! <laughs> <laughs> Is it honestly supposed to sound like that? Good lord. I mean, seriously, what the hell is wrong? Wait, is it actually supposed to? Right. We're still working out the kinks, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you know, badgers and, 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 and other rodents have been gnawing at Fred's computer all day. Yes, yes. Uh, just in time for this to happen. So do you know what? Gents. Let's just uh, get on with it. Let's begin. Yes. Are you gentlemen ready? Oh, yes. Yes. I'll never be. All right. And oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't it's, actually it's explained the quest rules. Historian. We haven't actually explained the rules. I just uh, did. Know, but, <laughs> well, no, you but... You haven't but, explained yeah. the rules. Gareth explained the rules. There's a big fucking difference. No, but, but uh, you know, uh, four cards, that's one thing. But what four cards? There's a, there's a uh, character, there's a task, there's a uh, location, and there's a modifier. Yes. True. That's that. Th those that are the was, four bits. That was, extre it. that was extremely important, considering it's going to become painfully obvious in one moment. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, I'm... excuse me. I think I'm on my period. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Please do continue, Igor. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, in three, two, one. Boom. The Pope from Boston must secure the big account before their bladder explodes. Right, turn that into a game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, who's there? Is, is, is it the Pope's bladder, or is it uh, the uh, big account's bladder? <laughs> yeah. I Who think bad? it's the Pope's. The yeah. Pope's big bladder explodes. So there's a timer in this game. Uh, no. Yeah. I no? mean, yeah... Well, I, timers suck. You shouldn't put timers in adventure games. Let's just sure. throw that out for the beginning. All right, so, cool. So how, so how does the Pope know that uh, his bladder is about to imminently explode? <laughs> well, let's let's uh, let's. I think we should start off with a little bit of character development here. He's he's not just the Pope. He's the Pope from Boston. <laughs> so he's not a real Pope. <laughs> well, this is, well, here's here's the thing though. If he's if he's the Pope from Boston, we have to determine, is he a special Pope, like a special chapter of Pope from Boston? Or is it just that the Pope has been selected and he just happens to be originally from Boston? Ooh, that's a good, that's that's, a good one. So that presumably... Would, that would be an ecumenical matter. Yeah, so presumably this would take place in the future because our, the current Pope is originally from Argentina. So... We'll have to presume that Pope Francis has died, or that this is in a uh, uh, an alternate universe here. Well, so yeah, we'll say Catholics in Boston, so it could happen. Yeah, so he could be he could be an Irish Catholic pope, originally from Boston, selected as the first American pope. But I do like the idea. <laughs> yeah, but the mis the the uh, the the twist here is that his bladder. Has been cursed by Satan, <laughs> and therefore does the, player, does, does, does the player know that from the get go, or is it a plot twist? It might be. It could be a plot twist. I mean, it could the start opening, off. Right. The opening cinematic is the Pope from Boston. Thank you for coming. Uh, here's your. Here, here are your papal quarters. Here's a oh, papal quarters. Sorry. Here's the Vatican and all its splendor. Oh my bladder. Oh, and he well, lays down and during the night, and then you know demons descend upon his bladder and his penis and start tearing at it. And, and I can just I can like, see like the in, opening, like in the Whoa. Pandora direct, where you sometimes see what the villains are up to without text knowing, and sometimes cuts to the devil going. This is all working out according to plan. <laughs> so and just sits there. He just sits there squeezing two Nerf balls. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I. A lot of it's exposition his, from the devil. Yeah. yeah, it's his bladder, not his, not his balls. I, I'd like to think <laughs> he only really needs one. What I'm, what I'd like to think is that we get uh, Mark Wahlberg in to play, <laughs> and in the opening scene, he's just there in a Red Sox jersey, and then the smoke comes up from the Vatican, and he comes out, and you know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> he's regalia. Hey, Wait, that's not, 
<laughs> That's not a Boston accent at all. <laughs> so, so, so to recap, right now we we have a a, a plot. No, going where, I, have, where the, I know. Oh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so we have the opening cinematic is <laughs> we switch out Mark, Mark Wahlberg for Matt Damon, and he, <laughs> the smoke comes out, and he comes out and he says, "Hey." You like apples? Well, I'm the new pope. How do you like them apples? Oh, God. <laughs> and at which point we begin. At, at, at which point Ben Affleck gets run over by a truck, and that's all we see of him. Matt yeah. Damon was in Dogma, so there's a tie-in with the religious. Ah, thing. there you at go. At this point, you've ensured at least two 10 out of 10 reviews. What do you say again? <laughs> okay, so, so we've, we've gotten as far as the pope from Boston being okay. Matt Damon. Yeah. Well, well he could a be Matt Damon-esque. Issue. I mean, it depends on what our budget is for this game. Can we actually secure Matt Damon? Do we need to sound like, you know, that that sort of thing. That's. I'm, like, I think I'm thinking, model I'm thinking as well that Matt Damon should be the bad guy as Matt Demon. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, Matt Damon. I, I, I played a... Oh, it was... A, Aaron Robinson did a game called Little Girl in Underland way back for the TIG Source D-Make uh, competition that you were supposed to take a game and sort of make it, and it was American McGee's Alice as done by a bootleg Russians, and there was an enemy called Damon, which was D-A-E-M-O-N, and it was just a demon with a Photoshop Matt Damon's head on it. <laughs> <laughs> you got something there. Yeah, that's, um, that sounds that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what is what's the the big account that he has? Yeah, that, that's that's what I wanted to get to. We have we have uh, we have a Matt Damon or a Matt Damon lookalike. He's the next pope, and he has a fantastic Boston accent. Mm-hmm. What big account must he secure? I mean, the Vatican has shitloads of Nazi money. Yes, it used to, but they gambled it all away, and now they need a big score in order to keep the church afloat. Is this no, part okay. of the devil's plan? Is is this is this a plot to get all the money out of the Vatican and distract the Pope by having his bladder explode so he can secure the money? Maybe. Now the question too is uh, how um, metaphysical are we getting in this game? Like, are angels and God and Satan actual characters that we see in this game, or are they just kind of? In well, the I mean, I mean in the you, know, you can you can get as metaphysical as you want. Looking at these cards is essentially a, a modern day Doctor Faustus. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true actually, because if we're going with the devil infested bladder, uh, then we definitely have to take into uh, account the supernatural. We definitely have to have a mad demon uh, being the one who uh, you know chokes the bladder um, from from the uh, yeah, yeah from, from the sidelines and such. Um, uh, so, so we definitely have to include the supernatural heavens and demons and, and all that stuff. Um, also, the, he, he's he's the Pope. He has to believe in this shit. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, the big account cannot be uh, secured. Yeah, uh, true. But, true. but true. Gareth, 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 you're 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 the you're the historian. All that all that Nazi gold in the Vatican, um, yeah. which we assume, which I assume at this point uh, is the big account. Right. Uh, and if we're talking like either a setting in the future or a setting in an alternate universe, what would potentially um, what would potentially uh, uh, get that account away from the Vatican? What? How, how could they possibly lose that? Well, they're going to have a lot of sexual harassment laws. <laughs> Oh, this just, uh, this just yeah, this just went into R-rated territory. Uh, I think I think I think we just added a scene to the opening cinematic. Uh, Ian Watkins comes out and goes, "I support the Vatican." Cardinal Watkins. <laughs> Cardinal Watkins. Cardinal <laughs> Watkins. <laughs> Oh, for for those of you who don't know who Ian Watkins are, we're not going to tell you. We're just going to say if you Google him, it's not our fault. No, it's not mega lulls. No, it's not mega lulls in the least. I, and if I can you're see from Francisco Boston, Googling Catholic him right now. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, he's an interesting looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Welsh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the least of his problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, so Cardinal Watkins uh, has apparently disgraced the Vatican so much <laughs> that uh, all of their money has been uh, uh, spent on uh, child pornography lawsuits or okay. child molestation yeah. lawsuits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. 
so well, actually, how, how can... actually, it's it's the it's the bumbling comic relief duo, Cardinal Savile and Cardinal Watkins. <laughs> no, Jimmy wait. Savile. Okay, so so should should we make like Cardinal Watkins the uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> main antagonist, or is that the uh, uh, Mad Demon? I think yes. well, <clears throat> some. Uh, Sexual harassment lawsuits and and various other things aren't going to make the Pope's bladder explode. I would hope. Yeah. So ultimately, there's, there's some issues here. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the nature of the abuse. Ultimately, <laughs> I would say that the that the bladder exploding is pretty much the main uh, the main sort of conflict here. Yeah. So yeah. So this is like uh, this has potential to be like a man versus himself story. Which is good because you don't see that enough in games. So I mean, I, I mm, well actually no, because if someone has cursed his bladder, then it's it's well if we if we do away with demon. that if we do away yeah. with that because it's slightly unrealistic. Unlike the post well. bladder exploding, which is <laughs> perfectly normal, then then yeah, I agree. Then you've got a man versus himself thing. Well, why would his bladder explode? Is it because he has to urinate and he can't find release, or I'm, I'm sure <laughs> there, because... I'm sure there is some kind of obscure medical condition that will allow this to happen. Okay. Look, this, is, this might not be. Honestly, I, I think I think it's a it's a very um, a good uh, touch that uh, the main character is the Pope and he has uh, a satanic curse on his bladder, so it, that if he doesn't complete certain steps, his bladder will explode in some sort of horrifical, uh, gory manner, and um, and it's up to it's up to him and uh, none of the other clerical uh, uh, dudes can help him in the slightest because they're all ineffectual or all fucking children or something uh, so uh, so it's up to him he's the he's the one true pope uh, so, but with but with a cursed bladder so how does, how does this uh, play is it like an escape the room type thing where he just feels shit my bladder's exploding i got to fix that <laughs> or is it is it over a longer period of time that he's noticing certain organs stretching out I think I think Gareth had a point he wanted to get across. Yes. Well, I, I don't think that the bladder exploding doesn't necessarily have to be for the entire length of the story. This could be like the end game. Is that mm -hmm. I don't know. He has to go to heaven, but because he's not technically dead, you're not allowed to piss in heaven or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I was thinking something along the lines of him being the pope. He sort of has to be the quote unquote moral compass of Catholicism. So. The devil could have like locked all the doors in the uh, all the bathroom doors in the Vatican. So <laughs> he can't. I mean, being the pope, he can't just he can't just pee outside because that would be very pope-like of him. So in all in in order to preserve modesty, he needs to get back into a you know a working papal toilet. Yeah, mod modesty and the ropes get in the way. Yeah, it could it could even. I mean, we could even reach into, like, you know, Greek mythology and sort of do, like, a, a parallel to, like, Tantalus. And, like, you know, he can't, instead of not being able to eat or whatever, he just can't pee. And he's tantalized by, like, all these bathrooms. But no matter how much he <laughs> pees, his, bath, his bladder just doesn't empty or something. You know. Maybe maybe wow. it should be, like, like, like you said, instead, instead of there being a timer, every time he passes a bathroom... He has this uh, this little meter uh, in the top that just uh, sort of fills up. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like yeah. like the King's Quest Two bridge that you can only cross a finite <laughs> number of times. You can only yeah. pass so many bathrooms in the Vatican before things go to shit. So you actually have to to uh, uh, purposely navigate around bathrooms, restrooms, uh, tall bushes, um, things that things that are conducive to the act of peeing. Yes. <laughs> so the Vatican is pretty big. I, I'm guessing our play area is going to be exclusively the Vatican. This isn't a globe trotting adventure. <laughs> nah, no. no let's stick to the Vatican. Vatican. Make it's it a big like location. One to one reconstruction of the Vatican in 3D. That would be, you know. Quite yeah. Impressive. Yeah, and that was what I wanted to get into because now we seem to have we seem to have a bare plot down. But how would it play? Uh, what do you think, Francisco? Is it a text adventure? Is it FMV? Is it, uh, is it 3D? Ooh, ooh. Point um, and click. P and click. 3D, 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 3D. First person 3D with a HUD with a little meter at the top. And then every time he wants to pee, the screen turns kind of yellow. 
I feel like also you should, like it should be third person because the more he has to pee, the more bloated he becomes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just kind of like it affects his walk cycle. And he's, <laughs> this is, this is, that this is brilliant. That is brilliant. More and more to his iron stick. Yeah, by his then, idol by then he's just, just waddling. Yeah, by then he's just waddling along and he's like bloated and he's just uh, yeah. like, like the penguin in Batman forever. And he's oh, crossing his legs and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like little little sweat things are coming out of his head. Is there like is there like some mechanic that we can use to uh, sort of uh, you know alleviate him because you don't want to uh, you know get into a tight spot where you're surrounded by bathrooms and uh, oh my god I walked past too many bathrooms is there some sort of uh, leeway device like uh, you actually stick a syringe into his bladder and empty oh it but well, you can only do that one or two kind of, times. isn't that kind of action is is it an action adventure? Well, you um, can have could it's be. Just, um, let me look something up real quick. At, at, at this point, it's kind of a survival adventure game. Yes, got, it is. He's got quite a big hat with quite a large volume. <laughs> yeah. That is true. <laughs> yes. So I, I, think think every, time, I think everyone got the gist of that. <laughs> every time he walks by a bathroom and he can't use it, I think being from Boston, he should make some sort of exclamation. So we need to incorporate ah wicked pisser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can, can we can appropriate we, or not? Can we just recap the plot for a for a brief second? <laughs> Is someone now, writing now this we're down? Get mechanics. Yeah, I think Francisco has a good overview. <laughs> oh God, I don't remember. Okay, so the Pope from Boston has just been newly elected. He has to secure oh. the you oh. know loom do oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, Loom, do something like that. Well, we do have the, we do have the staff. We, we do. do. Staff. Yeah, he could play certain <laughs> charms on his staff to open bathrooms or something. The yellow note. <laughs> <laughs> he plays a drive that relieves him. <laughs> oh right, the uh, the magic papal spell. That's the one that gets you out. But anyway, uh, sorry sorry to cut you off, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, please recap the plots uh, so far, and then we'll try to work yeah. it into something Loomish. Well, as far as I remember, the Pope from Boston, who's been newly elected, is in the Vatican. He's been informed that the all the money that the Vatican has has been lost somehow, and he has to secure a big account. What was the account he had to secure? <laughs> we don't know yet. We need to know. Oh, right. Okay, well, he finds, he finds hope in an account that he has to secure to restore the Vatican's funds, but he's, his bladder has been cursed by Satan, and... Within a set amount of time, it will explode, and no matter how much he tries to urinate, he cannot find relief. And also, um, he can't. All the bathroom doors in the Vatican are locked, and he can't, out of decency, pee outside because that would not be Pope-like behavior. <laughs> well, I love it, it sounds brilliant when you when yeah, you say it like it's, that. It's, I will, it's, I will it's have awesome. I love how I love how 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 that's pretty much a, an internal monologue, isn't it? I mean that uh, that quote appears ad verbatim in the game. Like if if, if he Actually, tries to if he tries to piss where he can, that wouldn't be papal behavior. I, I'm just, that wouldn't be papal behavior. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can I just, I've just can, can I just interject that I don't yes. think uh, like like you said it shouldn't be on a timer. It should be that whenever he passes a bathroom, the devil squeezes his bladder. And he really, really has to piss. But yes. uh, as, you, as you say, all the doors are locked. So every time he passes the bathroom, the urge to pee just becomes that greater. And we can we can put in lots of little uh, you know mechanics where he uh, goes to the Vatican Carnival, for instance, and there's all these uh, uh, you know uh, potty uh, porta yeah, potties. People, people uh, dressed as toilets. Yeah, and people dressed as toilets, and 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 you know, little children walking around. Mommy, I have to pee, and he just yeah, he's he's crossing his legs. Fountains. There's the Pope. Oh, and and found, right, let's give know, him a hug. I'm imagining the Vatican has lots of decorative Renaissance fountains. Yeah, probably yeah, also. exactly. Every every time he passes, a, a, you know, a rolling fountain or uh, or yeah. someone uh, pops open a champagne cork, which apparently they do a lot in the Vatican, uh, <laughs> or, or or anything like that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, someone walks by in a pair of speedos. He's going to the water, or someone just goes. Some someone someone with a lisp. Someone who constantly yeah. talks like this. No, the devil shows up as the serpent and is just yeah, exactly. him. Yeah, exactly. 
But Let there's me. something we need to consider, I think. What obstacles are in his way? What steps does he have to take in order to secure the big account? Because but that's presumably we, what he has to do while he's racing against the, the bladder clock. Well, yeah, now, we got, now we got a slightly clearer look at the game mechanics because it's a very relevant question, but whatever we answer, we probably have to, to consider that we're working loom in. Mm. Well, so answering that all question sorts was... of secrets in the Vatican vaults, don't they? You know, things that were directly written by Moses or, or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a lost prophet's album. <laughs> oh, God. Also, we yeah, haven't cool. quite figured out what the big account is. I mean, mm-hmm. if if we're mm-hmm. if we're secluding the entire game in the Vatican, uh, what account is is he meeting like with Japanese businessmen? Or or Welsh child pornographers or uh, well maybe he doesn't know he's just been as he's just been tasked by God at, at another uh, time to secure the big account. What's the big account? He well, doesn't one know thing, that. one way we could sort of tie things together is he could go to the bank or he could meet with the person who he's trying to secure the account with, and they make him an offer that's too good to be true, and it turns out to be Satan in disguise as a sleazy bank man. And unbeknownst to the Pope, as part of this uh, sort of deal that's too good to be true, his bladder is going to explode. So he has to do things in order to secure the account and also heal his bladder. But Satan is kind of taunting him and saying, well, you'll never be able to get this done in time and whatever. So it ultimately becomes fight the devil. I <laughs> love how I loved it by the Swiss guards. The Swiss have a lot of bank accounts with ah, yes. dodgy oh, yeah. money in them. I they love do. how you turned this into a postmodern Dr. Faustus. I really, really do. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally, I'm, I can assure you. I do like the idea that uh, from the outset, he's just the Pope, and uh, he said, uh, you know, everything's good. He's the first uh, Pope uh, from Boston and, and such, and uh, and then uh, uh, someone comes up to him and says, uh, you know, honestly, we've spent all this money on uh, on these lawsuits and such. We don't have any money. And then a person comes along. He has a, a red robe, and uh, he looks a bit like Matt Damon, and he says, I've got a big account, and you can have it, but you have 48 hours to procure me such and such. Otherwise, (laughs) your bladder will explode. Your bladder will explode for no obvious reason. Yeah, and then he gets to do all sorts of amoral, on papal things in order to to secure the account because right, it's because an adventure game and we all like seeing popes do naughty things. Exactly, yeah. and he, he, he can't go near water, he can't go mm-hmm. near uh, fountains, he can't go near anything that makes a, 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 a drizzly sound. There's loads of fountains in the Vatican, so that's... But he, has yeah. his, but he has his magical staff. Right. He has but, his magical staff which he can use to drain the fountains. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, not yeah, himself. Yeah, 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 like Moses and the Red Sea. There you go, yeah. It's the staff of Moses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Pope has the staff of Moses. I don't, I don't know if that's completely... Yeah, uh, theolo- I'm sorry, theologically speaking, yeah. this makes no sense, no. but I'm loving it, so let's go We can go just say it. it's, a, it's an artifact that the Vatican keeps, and so he, he knows about it, and he says, Ah, I'm going to get the guys. staff of Moses. Right, guys, that, that's that's the first puzzle of the game. You have to uh, descend into the catacombs of the Vatican to retrieve the lost artifact, the Staff of Moses, and then it turns into fucking loom. Yeah, and then you can you sort of, you know, uh, quiet water or uh, uh, spread, uh, you know, water apart or whatever. Yeah, you can use it to solve puzzles. Who's the guru that teaches you how to use it? Because I, I get the feeling that Jay and Silent Bob are going to be making some kind of entrance here with the dogma. How about just the spirit, the, the spirit of Moses? The spirit of Moses. Oh, oh yeah. Moses. Yeah, I love the course. fucking Heston shows up. Yeah. I love, the, I love that band. The spirit of Moses. Holy Moses! <laughs> says the <host. laughs> And I right. also like the idea that we have uh, Matt Damon modeled as the uh, Pope, and the uh, and the Satan character is also modeled after Matt Damon. Although yeah, so well, well, nice well one, of, one of them is one of them is probably Mark Wahlberg. But seeing as you can't tell them apart either way, it doesn't mm. fucking matter. No, but I, I I quite like the idea because that sort of puts uh, this idea into your head that maybe the Boston Pope has gone 
insane, and he's just really talking to himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. That person didn't doesn't really exist. It's really That's just his doppelganger from his uh, you know imagination. Right. So now it's Doctor Faustus meets Fight Club meets Loom in Boston with the dash of Tycho Bra. <laughs> in the Vatican, <laughs> not Boston. Well, that, that, that's that's yes. true. Yeah, that's true. I just I just like the idea of an adventure game set in the Vatican. I mean, who the hell is going to publish this? Well, well I mean, they've got it's... that. Uh, well, clearly the answer is Kickstarter. This is a Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> this is a self-published this is, this deal. Is a yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, is this a point and click? Because I'm, I'm kind of thinking it might benefit from being a, a sort of action platformer in the vein of Psychonauts. Yeah, well, I, I think, think, we, I think we established kind of it's. Yeah, I yeah. think we established it's third person uh, yeah. adventure in, in, in like uh, not pre-rendered 3D, but but uh, you know live 3D, so to speak. Right. Right. That's actually an interesting point because up until this point, I was thinking you know standard uh, 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 2D walking around and uh, you're faced with a certain amount of. Ch I, I was almost thinking like goblins. Mm. Like a, like a kind kind of goblins kind of thing where you're the pope and you enter a screen or a, a number of screens and you can walk between them. There's a set puzzle to be decided here uh, because the uh, uh, you know the protagonist cannot go near water because then his fucking mm. cock explodes. Um, the bladder uh, is not actually situated in the cock. What, what are you, a fucking doctor? Well, hold on. Now, this Get off my case. Can't, can't be anywhere near water. Now, surely all water in the Vatican is going to be holy water. There has to be mm -hmm. a, at least one part of the game where there's a witch that you need to drown in holy water. But you well, can't go to the water yourself. That could just be one of his one of his staff powers is he can bless water and make it holy. Oh, oh I love that. Oh, I like oh, that. Five he has to do it from a distance. Oh, we've got five minutes left, Jens. Oh, oh. He could also, actually, he could also, uh, <laughs> this also makes no theological sense. The Staff of Moses can be upgraded at some point to have the power of Jesus to turn water into wine, and vice Ooh. versa. Ooh. Yep. That's another I like, it. Wow, like it, I so. love that. I like so that idea. What, yeah. So what does the wine do? Does it replenish you in some way? But the drawback is that you have to pee even more after consuming the wine, or do you bribe other characters with wine? Or? I yeah, I was, you can get the banker drunk. So yeah, it could be used. As, yeah, it could be used as a puzzle of where you have to like you know get someone drunk in order to proceed or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I love the how you can. Possibilities are endless. I love how you can upgrade the staff of Moses. You know. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. sure. Jesus well, is like, well, I spent all this time grinding, and I, mean, I found a gemstone. And <laughs> well, hold on, guys. Oh, hold dear. on. Just oh. got back from watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Amazing, right? This needs to be oh, a musical Jesus. using the 1970s greatest hit. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, um, all right. Shit. A musical. Well, Jesus, well, Jesus Christ Superstar, obviously. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that's, we've got a point there, yeah. And there must be. there is a song by The Who called Water. That's true, um, but I, upgrade was probably the wrong word. I think these were just these are just different drafts that you learn on the staff of Moses. Okay, oh, good. Right. yeah, it's like so. This is like maybe this is like set in alternate seventies where he's like yeah. you know, the 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 alternate reality pope from seventies yeah. Boston must secure the big account, and he's playing like seventies music. You know, he's playing Smoke on the Water and Water by the Who and right, right, <laughs> and, like uh, yeah. fucking Pope with bell bottoms. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. We should probably Boston. yeah. Oh yeah, well yeah, you can have Boston in there. Oh yeah yeah yeah! <laughs> wow, yeah. it's been such a long time. That's I like wish I could that's be peeing. <laughs> <That's the laughs> yeah, but uh, we need to get some ABBA in there too. I think simply because they're Waterloo. terrible. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so. Over yeah. to you, gentlemen. I, I don't think you quite realized how brilliant that was when you said. No, I realized midway <laughs> through while saying it. I was like. <laughs> I've got something here. <laughs> mm. I just like the idea of him, him, him coming up to like a, a group of people in the uh, town square, like in the Vatican Square. They're just they're, they're just standing around acapelling Waterloo, and he can't go near them. If he hears the song, he wants to pee so badly. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or they could be, yeah, they could be by a fountain, and he can just use his turn water into wine draft to get them distracted so they stop singing and they just drink. And uh, yeah, I want to exactly. rock and roll all night and party every day. Okay, that's so right, that's right. We've They're, got two, uh, two minutes left. We know that we've got the Pope, we know that he's from Boston, we know that he can play all these different things on his stuff, but I think we need to settle down on what the big account is. Oh, right. Um, plastics. <laughs> Honestly, I like the idea of the devil showing up and just saying, I have everything you need. I have all the money in the world. You just have to go and do this and this for me. Yeah, and, I think uh, we should keep the account ambiguous until the very end, and then it turns out to be just something really silly. And yeah. also, the devil looks exactly like him. Matt Damon yeah. meets Matt Damon. Or it's like a Dan Brown twist, where it's like, oh, an account, a story can be an account. The big account would be the Bible, so he basically just oh. had to, he has to secure a boat that was there the whole fucking time. Nice. There you go. Nice. And players and players around the world are like, oh my god, mind blown, Jesus, <laughs> heaven, woman, or you know what, fucking ever. Also, the game has I, ninety-five I, chapters, and each of them lasts two minutes. Yes, <laughs> I just read the last symbol, and that pissed me off through it. Yeah. Dude, guys, I, I I just like the idea that by the end game, you actually meet up with the devil again, and you realize that he's just a figment of the Pope's imagination, and the Pope is batshit crazy. And uh, and then uh, you know he realizes that he just desperately needs to pee, and it was all a dream. And then he wakes up. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. The you know, uh, it was just a dream. Never, never, ever do that. Fifteen minutes no. to go. Someone, someone, take over. Don't ever do drugs, Boston Pints. <laughs> I do like the idea of it having, well, of it being like a, a urine-induced hallucination, but. Not if, not if it was all a dream. And on that note, we are done designing. So let's uh, <laughs> let's recap. What did what did we come up with? Uh, well, the Pope. <laughs> oh. We've we've actually gotten a very very good design going. I think the only thing we didn't quite get is uh, the actual quest. I do like the idea of him being presented a quest by his, by the figment of his own imagination, yeah. and then walking along and and his perceived uh, need to relieve himself, uh, but he can't, is really just you know some sort of schizophrenic uh, idea in his head. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Every time he walks past a fountain or a bathroom or something, he just goes, "I have to pee, but I don't really want to. I can't. I can't. Oh my god!" And it turns out it's all in his head. And then finally, he confronts the uh, figment of his imagination, and um, uh, stuff happens. Yeah. I, well, I think that covers about the whole thing up pretty neatly. Stuff. Happens. Francisco, uh, <laughs> sir, sir, sir Gonzalez. Yes. What did you get out of all of this? Would you, yes. kick, would, you would you back this game on Kickstarter? Um, <laughs> no. No. But <laughs> I would. I would. I would totally expect to see a game like this in a game jam, like a forty-eight hour or seventy-two hour game jam. <laughs> that um, makes sense in that venue. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, it it needs it uh, to be a Kickstarter game. I think it needs some some fleshing out. But obviously, you know, we need more time to design it. But for thirty minutes, I think we've got something going here. Yeah, this, up, this, uh, this could work. And get him to fund it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Steve Alexander is looking for a new project. Uh, let's ah, just well, yeah. there you go. I'm sure. Yeah, this sounds like it would be right up Steve's alley. <laughs> to be honest, sci-fi have made films like Sharknado. I yeah, mean, true. This isn't that far removed. No, that's <laughs> true. It's kind of like, you know, you have cult movies. You can have cult adventure games. Yeah, yeah true. It's kind of in, in that vein. Uh, so, uh, vein. Guys, uh, guys out there in uh, in YouTube land and on the RSC channel. Actually, there are no one on the RSC channel right now. But uh, please, if you have a uh, title for this game, we would welcome, absolutely welcome. In fact, we would adore your submissions. Uh, please, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, post a comment on the YouTube video or uh, tweet them at us at BS Designers. Uh, uh, please, uh, just uh, you know, what should the uh, game about the Pope? Busting for a piss, be called. 
That well, was obviously like a good title in its own right. It should be called Wicked Pisser. <laughs> Wicked Pisser. <laughs> I like, this. I like this. I, we have a very good candidate right here on the air. Well, How about someone cable, else come cable, pisser. cable pisser? Cable piss. <laughs> cable pisser. Yeah, cable piss. No, that sounds more like a simulator. <laughs> or <laughs> press A to the, respect and piss. Instead of the holy C, it could be the holy P. But, the holy yeah. P. <laughs> the holy mm. single. Mm. Wicked Pisser 1 episode title. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need to make it episodic. There you go. That's what all the oh, kids are doing. You can't actually design anymore at this point. Oh, right, right. Uh, right. Most okay. rich, so while, while it's a good idea, it's, it, can't, it can't be part of the final Wicked Pisser concept. Oh, well. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I do, uh, actually, I do, I do very much appreciate uh, being able to design this game with uh, the uh, uh, legend that wrote uh, a very historically accurate game. Um, who is now forced to imagine a pope from Boston busting for a piss. Yes. From the 1970s. From the 1970s. From the 1970s. With, with that it's killer like, soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It'd probably do better commercially, to be honest. <laughs> we, we do... We do oh. we, I mean, I mean it, it, it clearly necessitates having to set it in an alternate reality. Uh, <laughs> you know, 1970s yeah. Boston pope. Yeah. Yeah. Which means there's a lot more freedom. There is. Well, you know, also, and, the, the you Pope wouldn't just wander around the Vatican, would he? I mean, uh, you know, wander around the Vatican, legs crossed, you know, <laughs> trying not to pee in fountains and such. Well, to be fair, how many adventure games from from our generation were around during the 70s? I mean, for all intents and purposes, no one will be able to verify whether this actually happened, so it shows <laughs> it's historically accurate. Mm. We should market this game as historically accurate. It's just this, this open bell bottoms walking around singing ABBA tunes and trying not to piss in fountains. Yeah. The one yeah. you never heard of. Anticipate lower than expected sales in Latin America. <laughs> Probably. But we are we are we are very grateful for your participation, Sir yes. Gonzalez. Thank you for for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Again, it's uh, an honor to be your first guest. It was an absolute <laughs> joy. Of that. Let, let's find out what happens afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do hope you enjoyed it. Also, I, I, I've learned that you actually speak fluent Spanish. Yes, I do. Is this true? Yes. So, so how, how do you say our tagline in Spanish? Cause What's our tagline again? Our tagline is, it's a game, it's a show, but it's not a game show. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the pun is kind of lost in Spanish. I know. Yeah, uh, there's, there's no real. There's not really a, a. I don't think there's really a word for game show. Lucky um, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's consult. Let's consult my go-to, which is Google Translate. <laughs> Why didn't oh, yeah. I just do that? Well, thanks to Google Translate, I, I speak fluent Spanish as well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Viet oh, apparently game show is detected as Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> Translate from Vietnamese. Yeah, there's no word in Spanish for game show. So it oh. would just be like... Uh, a show es, that is also a game. Es una presentación, es un juego, pero no es un... Juego, show. presentación. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. That was totally worth it. Yes, thank uh, you. Actually, well, I'll tell you guys this story after we're off the air. <laughs> <laughs> you always do that. Guys, you always do that on, on the Blue Cup tools. Yeah, yeah, I have this great story. I'll tell you off the air. And I'm assuming oh, the train is public. going... No, 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 don't public do that. And on that bombshell, do you want to, to uh, lead us out of the Vatican, Mr. Millward? Well, I have nothing to say other than thank you very much, Francisco, and uh, if you've managed to stay through to the end of this, clearly the concept works, and uh, we'll see you next week. Also, we please have a, follow, our good, follow our good friend uh, Grundislav at Grundislav Games on Twitter, and uh, check out the upcoming uh, game Shardlight that he's doing with yes. Ben Chandler, who's an amazing person, and... Uh, um, also check out uh, his uh, game A Golden Awake, which is uh, on Steam and on GOG and um, is published by YGNI Games. So, um, you know, 
we did just title. drag this guy in off the street. He actually has some crap. Yeah, and the gold in the title actually turns out to be very well relevant for the design <laughs> we've been mapping out over the Nazi past Nazi gold! Hour. No, it's, golden it's, shower it's wake. Golden shower. No. Nazi golden wake! Yeah. No, no, okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, I, was, I was... Okay, never mind. Uh, uh, please continue, Gareth. We're on, I say we, you are on at BS Designers. Um, <laughs> and the IRC channel that we mentioned earlier on irc.freenode.net, um, we do tend to check in from time to time even when we're not recording. So if you actually want to step, stop by and talk about adventure games or Ian Watkins or whatever it is that you want to talk about, <laughs> you know, we'll be on there discussing all. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I'm at Millie QED. Trolls, have you got anything you need to plug? Uh, no, I'm SQ Historian on Twitter, and uh, Fred is Frederick underscore Olsen, and uh, we should probably tell who is going to be on the show next week. We yes. should. And if I, somebody can remember that, they should say it. I can't. I can't personally. Uh, Fred. Ooh. Fred has no idea either. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, go, it's going to be David, uh, David X uh, Cohen. David X uh, Newton. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, David X Newton. <laughs> You're just making this up at this point, aren't you? You are making no, this yeah, up. Yeah, we yeah. will be here at 2 p.m. Uh, on the east coast of America, 8 p.m. if you're in Europe, with David X. Newton, and that will be on Sunday rather than Saturday, 30th of August, 2015. Yes. yes. So I'm going to prepare eventually. <laughs> So on that bombshell, it's time to end uh, Open Crowdsource. Hope you've been enjoying it. Uh, please Jeremy do watch Clark's the next episode. Uh, I hope not. I'm more, <laughs> more James May. James May at the moment. Bad yeah. taste in clothes and, and long hair. But uh, anyway, we hope you have enjoyed this. And uh, do hit us up on Twitter and the RC channel, Facebook, Google+, the website, whatever, if you have anything to add to this. Um, we'll see you in a week's time. Thank Good you. Goodbye. Goodbye.